Hello everybody. So I will continue on the chapter about mortality and the next topic here that we're going to cover it's about infant mortality. So let's just go to slide 114 to start on this topic about uh, infant mortality. So um, the infant mortality rate is the most important measure of infant death. And how exactly is estimated the infant mortality rate? We pretty much get the number of deaths in a year to children under the age of one, and we divide by the number of babies born in that same year in that same place, which could be a country, a state, a city, and so on. And multiply by 1,000, because that rate is usually really a small number. And um, it's important for us to understand infant mortality rate because declining infant mortality is a key to population growth. Usually when we have substantial infant mortality declines in a specific country, that is related to an increase in the size of population because then these children will keep growing and then reach uh, older ages. And infant mortality is such an important measure that in the life table, in the one that we use to estimate life expectancy, the first age group from zero uh, to four, it's actually broken down from um, zero to one and one to four, exactly because that zero to one gives us the information about the infant mortality rate. And the declines in infant mortality that uh, the world experienced in, in these last decades is attributable to, especially to the development of oral re re rehydration therapy. And that's pretty much a solution of salts and sugars taken orally. And it's important because it treats diarrhea, which is a major cause of death in young children. And um, it was developed in labs and it was tested in the field, especially in Bangladesh. And now it's widely used in, in the world. And this therapy was uh, one of the, of the founders still holds a teaching position in, in the Harvard School of Public Health. That's uh, Dr. Richard Cash. So it's just to show that this therapy developed recently a really uh, simple solution but an important therapy that reduced the incidence of diarrhea among young, young children uh, reducing infant mortality in, in recent decades. But still we have a lot of variation in infant mortality. So this is data from 2015. The world average was 37 deaths of children before reaching the age one per 1,000 live births. So Sierra Leone, for example, had 117 uh, deaths of children before reaching age one, uh, considering every 1,000 live births in the country. So usually uh, African countries have the, higher, the highest rates of infant mortality and um, more developed societies like Japan, Western Europe, and North America have the lowest rates. And here we have a table with the countries with the highest and the lowest infant mortality rates in the world based on data from 2013. So you have the highest infant mortality rates in, observed in African countries and lowest infant mortality rates you see in Western Europe, in Japan, but also in Singapore, in Asia, and Estonia as well, more like uh, East Europe. So uh, it's just to show this still, again, there is a lot of variation in the levels of infant mortality around the world. Uh, around the world. Central African Republican uh, Republic 116 uh, babies die before reaching age one per 1,000 live births, and in Iceland, only 1.8. And specifically in the U.S., infant mortality rates 
they vary a lot by the mother's race ethnicity. So here we have it broken down, infant mortality, by the race ethnicity of the mother of those babies who died and uh, or the, the 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 babies that were born and and also the babies who died in that specific year and this data here goes from 2000 to 2010 so you see that the rates of death of infants bef before reaching age one um, per 1000 live births these rates are much higher among non-Hispanic blacks. So children born to mothers who are non-Hispanic African Americans, they have the highest chances of dying before they reach age one. So here, like around uh, 13 uh, deaths per 13.5 13 deaths of children before reaching age one per 1,000 live births among uh, women, among mothers who are no Hispanic African Americans. And in this case, uh, the rates, the infant mortality rates among for, for mothers uh, who are no Hispanic white or Hispanic, much lower. And as, which is, this is a little bit related to the Hispanic paradox as well the mortality levels here are pretty much really equivalent among non-Hispanic white and Hispanic. Overall, the Hispanic population has lower socioeconomic status than the non-Hispanic white, but in terms of uh, health outcomes, they have similar health outcomes as the white population, or even better. And in this case, here's an example of the Hispanic, Hispanic paradox working on infant mortality as well. And uh, so here I'm gonna talk a little bit about neonatal and postneonatal mortality rates because the infant mortality rate can be pretty much thought as a sum of two separated rates. Because we said infant mortality rate, the numerator are those children who die before reaching age one divided by the number of babies born in that specific year multiplied by 1000. The neonatal mortality rate, the, de the numerator, are the babies who died before reaching 20 days um, of, uh, of age. Instead of like going up to one year as we did for the infant mortality rate, the neonatal mortality rate, those who die before uh, reaching 28 days of life. The post-neonatal mortality rate are those babies who die between 29 days and up to a year of age. So we are just getting the neonatal mortality rate, it's pretty much the babies die in the first month, and the post-neonatal mortality rate, the babies dying from the second month until the 12th month of, uh, of life, before actually reaching uh, one year of age. So we are pretty much breaking down the infant mortality rate by the neonatal and the post-neonatal uh, mortality rate. And in this case here, it's just uh, important for us to understand it because usually uh, babies, the highest, uh, the incidence of death among babies before reaching age one usually happens closer to zero than to one. So we have a lot of this breaking down on the rate exactly to better understand these patterns. And uh, here, specifically about the neonatal mortality rate, we have data for the rates and also the overall numbers of neonatal deaths and data from 1990 and 2013. So developed regions and also developing regions, they had a decline on neonatal mortality rate between 1990 and 2013. And the decline in percentage terms, it was actually more substantial among developed regions than in developing regions. But you still see a lot of variation within countries in, in developing regions, uh, a lot of variation in, in the level 
of neonatal mortality rate in 2013. So sub-Saharan African countries still have really high levels of neonatal mortality rates compared to other countries. Southern Asia as well, and even like excluding India as well, is still high levels of neonatal mortality rate. And just to give you an idea in terms of numbers, so in developing regions, around 4.5 million babies died before um, reaching 20 days uh, of age. And, and this number declined, but still it's 2.7 million babies dying before reaching 28 days of age. Um, so it's still, it's a really considerable amount of babies being born in really early ages. In Sub-Saharan Africa in itself, you have around 1 million babies dying before reaching 20 days, um, 20 days of age. And uh, in, in this data from 2013. And when we talk about neonatal and post-neonatal post mortality rates, it's important to explain these two terms of endogenous causes of death and exogenous causes of death. Endogenous causes of death in an infant can occur because of genetic issues or conditions associated with fetal development or the birth process. So endogenous causes are much more related to genetic uh, characteristic genetic problems that the, the, the baby experienced in, at the beginning of their lives. Exogenous cause of death is due mainly to environmental or external factors. So it's more related to the place where the baby is being raised, where their, the family lives. So it's more related to incidents of infections and accidents. So in terms of the neonatal deaths, the main causes of neonatal deaths are endo endogenous conditions. So it's much more related to genetic conditions. So it's congenital uh, malformations, chromosomal abnormalities, complications of delivery, low birth rate, genetic disorders. However, endogenous causes dominate infant mortality mainly in the early days of life and not for the entire first month of life. So remember, the neonatal uh, death rate takes into account those in the numerator, those babies dying in the first month of life. But the, in the endogenous causes are the main causes of these babies dying in the first month of life. But they are not the only ones. The exogenous causes are important as well. But the endogenous conditions are really important really, really in the early days of lives related to a series of genetic issues. In terms of the post-neonatal uh, deaths, the main causes of it are related to endogenous, exogenous causes. So just to give an idea, the post-neonatal mortality rate was 18 per 1,000 live births for, for the world in 2013. In four developed countries, it was really, really low, two per 1,000 live births. So these are deaths happening in the second and, uh, and un until before the, the second month, until before the baby reaches one year of age. So just taking here the post-neonatal death rate was 18 per 1,000 live births in the world in 2013. If we go back to that previous table for the world in 2013, the neonatal mortality rate was 20 per 1,000. So 20 per 1,000 neonatal mortality rate and post neonatal 18 per 1,000. So that's, as I mentioned before, in post neonatal period and in first few years of life are mainly due to exogenous causes. So post neonatal period, our babies dying in the second month of life up until before reaching one year of age. But even in the next few years, the uh, main causes of death of children are related to exogenous causes. So incidences of infectious diseases, accidents, and injury that they might be exposed to. 
So in this case, improved living standards, better health care, and public health programs as a whole have greater effects on exogenous causes than on endogenous causes. So all these public health uh, measures that governments uh, take, they really improve uh, life conditions of families and then as a consequence of the babies as well and that diminishes the the risk of babies dying in their first few years of life due to exogenous causes another rate that's important to to talk about are stillbirths and stillbirths are uh it's cause a death related to miscarriage and fetal deaths. So a stillbirth is a fetus not born alive and is not registered as a death because it's a fetus not born alive. So the stillbirth rate, the SBR, how is it calculated? We get stillbirths in the numerator and it divided by the live births by the stillbirths and multiply by 1000 as well. And that's information for a year and for a specific location, which can be a country, can be a region of the world, can be a group of countries, can be a state, and so on. So you divide the number of stillbirths. What is the stillbirth? Those uh, fetus that were not born alive. And divide them by the number of live births experienced in that same location that same year, added to the stillbirths in the, de in the denominator. So stillbirths are often identified in hospital reports dealing with obstetric procedures. And the World Health Organization um, mentions that interve inter interventions can be planned if we know at what point before birth the fetus died. So it's important to have really detailed hospital reports so policymakers can better plan some health measures in order to try to diminish, to decrease the incidence of stillbirth rates. So just to give an idea, around 2.6, there were recorded 2.6 million stillbirths in the world in 2009, so these are the overall numbers. And in terms of the rate, 18.9 stillbirths per 1,000 live births plus stillbirths in that same year, 2009, in the world. And another uh, rate that we, it's important to talk as well is the perinatal mortality rate, which relates to stillbirths and deaths of babies who lived for only seven days or less per 1,000 live births plus stillbirths in that specific year, in that specific location. So the numerator now adds the number of stillbirths and deaths of babies that died um, um, only up to seven days of, of life. And we divided that by the number of live births and stillbirths. And endogenous causes of mortality in the first week after birth, because that's the including the numerator here, are similar to the causes of stillbirths. So the endogenous causes that we talked before related to genetic issues, that they are important to understand the causes of death of neonatal mortality rates, are also important to understand mortality related to babies being born again, dying uh, in the first seven days of life, and also as a cause of stillbirths. So the causes of stillbirths and the causes of a death of neonatal um, infants, those that die in the first month, are all, they are mainly related to endogenous cause, to, to genetic issues. So the perinatal mortality rate in 2010, just to give an idea, in the world was 47 per 1,000 live births and stillbirths, and there was a lot of variation as well as we have been seeing for all the indicators. In the developed world was 10 per 1,000 live births and stillbirths. In the last available world was five times higher, 50. And just to give an idea, by countries, the Czech Republic and Singapore, four, um, the incidence of four stillbirths or deaths of babies who lived for only seven days or less per 
1,000 live births plus stillbirths, and in Mauritania, much higher, 111. And in the U.S., just to give an idea, it's 6. Point, it was 6.5 in 2006, and it declined a little bit to 6.3 in 2011. Another important indicator is the maternal mortality ratio. Maternal mortality ratio measures the extent to which mothers die immediately before, during, or after giving birth because of problems associated with either the pregnancy or the childbirth. So what exactly is the numerator? Is the number of deaths in a year of women dying as a result of complications of pregnancy, childbirth, and the poor parent. The poor parent being the condition of the woman immediately following childbirth. And then we divide, divide this number by the number of live births occurring in the year. And we multiply it by 100,000, not only by 1,000, because the maternal mortality ratio is increasingly rare in developed countries. Why do we call maternal mortality ratio and not a rate? Because the denominator in this indicator is the number of live births. The numerator is the number of women dying because of issues related to pregnancy and childbirth and poor repairing. So the denominator is not at risk of going to the numerator. And as we talked before in the rate, the denominator of the rate is at risk of experiencing the event that would put that same group of people in the numerator. So the infant mortality rate, for example, the, den the denominator is the number of live births that happen in a specific year in a specific location. The numerator, the number of babies who die before reaching age one. So those babies who were born in a specific year are at risk, and they are in the denominator, they are at risk of going to the numerator because they are babies born in a specific year, they are in the denominator, and they are at risk of dying and going to the numerator. In this case, that's not the case. That's not, the, uh, that's not what maternal mortality ratio is doing. Here we are comparing the size of women in the numerator to the size of live births in the denominator. So we are comparing the size of two different populations. Women dying as a result of pregnancy, childbirth, and puerperium in the numerator, and then live births in the denominator. Just to give an idea of uh, maternal deaths in the world, there were around 529,000 maternal deaths in 2000, and it declined substantially 15 years later to 313,000 uh, deaths. And in developing, but it's important to say that out of these 313,000 maternal deaths in 2015, 99% of them um, were um, concentrated, they happened in developing countries. So 99% of these maternal deaths here happened in developing countries. And 66% of these deaths here happen in sub-Saharan African countries, and 21% in Southern Asia. So just to show that, okay, maternal deaths, they still happen in developed countries, but most of them are happening in developing regions. And just to give an idea of the maternal mortality ratio in 2015, in the world it was 216 deaths, uh, oh, maternal deaths, per 100,000 live births. And just to show you that there is a lot of variation across countries and regions in the world. Sierra Leone, for example, 1,360 maternal deaths per 100,000 live births, Sub-Saharan Africa, 546, and much lower levels for other countries here, the US, Iran, and Hungary, 21, Greece, and Singapore, 3, maternal deaths per 1,000, 100,000 live births, and Estonia, two uh, maternal deaths per 100,000 live births. So what are the factors associated with maternal mortality ratio? Maternal deaths are mostly related to the age of the mother, the number of children that uh, women have, number of children that women have, 
it's called parity, the overall number of children that they have, and also birth spacing. How, uh, what's the, the, the age difference among the children that the same woman had? So age, younger and older women are more likely compared to women in their 20s and 30s to experience maternal deaths. So women young, um, younger than in their, like below 20 years of age and women above 30 years of age are more likely to experience maternal deaths. Women with more children, with more overall number of children or with higher parity are at higher risks of experience maternal deaths than women with fewer children. And women with short birth spacing or short birth intervals are also at higher risk of experience maternal deaths than women that have uh, wider birth intervals. But some other factors related to maternal mortality ratio are chronic disease and malnutrition, poverty, Un, uh, unwanted pregnancies, inadequate prenatal and obstetric care, lack of access to a hospital. So there are a series of other factors related to maternal mortality ratio as well. So these were the um, slides related to infant mortality in, in this topic, in this overall chapter about mortality. So thank you very much.